I'll start off by saying I I'm not going to go into any spoilers about this one, and I'm not going to cuss it. I want everyone to be able to watch this, no matter how they feel about strong language and whether or not they've seen the movie. So I watched *The Christmas Carol* 2009, starring Jim Carrey. First question: Why Jim Carrey? I like Jim Carrey. I do most of the time, but he does not fit as Ebenezer Scrooge. He, he read read the book, read Dickens in general. No funny faces, no running around like a maniac. So why? Probably the sorrow power, because frankly, he doesn't really do any Jim Carrey stuff in this movie. He um, he he does good for the the voice uh, voices that he does, um, the spirits and Scrooge, all of the ages that we see Scrooge in, um, and that's about it. There's not really. Um, and in fact, the the film's barely funny at all. Um, and I I think it was kind of marketed as I mean, from the trailer, I would say that it seemed like we were all supposed to think that it was going to be funny. It's not terribly funny. There are a couple of moments here and there, but it's not. Um, that's not a bad thing. It's not. I'm not sure. I'd really say that a Christmas Carol is supposed to be funny, you know, it's it's a morality tale. And it does pretty good as that. It it gets the the core, it gets the point um pretty well. The the social realism is kind of it it could be more thorough. It it could be a little harsher um considering the subject the and the the source material. Um but, you know, it and and they they cut out details and stuff that really is pretty important and adds a lot and i'm not sure there was any reason to do that to actually cut it other than to add more of those flybys where they go over and through london victorian era london and i don't really what's the point that's not that's not Dickens. That's not a Christmas Carol. There's it. It doesn't add anything. There's you know maybe one or two of them, and some of the different visual stuff they do in it does somewhat add to it. But most of the time, it's just for show. It's just you know see what we can do in 3D. And personally, that's that's my personal problem with the whole craze about oh you know animated films and 3D flicks and they tend to just the people forget that it's that there's a story there and it gets to be oh look what we can make the camera do and look at the pretty pictures and yeah and um so that that does happen a bunch but you know most of the materials there i think i believe every single scene is there most of the dialogue they didn't really change words or update the language or any anything like that, so that's good. Uh, Carrie d d definitely went for the accents, the, the dialect and s stuff, and does pretty well, I think. I'm not British, so... <clears throat> the characters, they, they pretty much more or less nail the characters all the way through. No one's really been altered or changed, um, but for how close they do stay to the, the source material, a lot of it does feel like they didn't completely get it and they're just reenacting it. They're not they're definitely they're a lot of it they're not interpreting. Some of it they are. Um they do add some pretty interesting stuff. But a lot of it they're just putting it you know, they're just going over going going through the motions um and not really um and I I I think with a lot of it, you don't really get the the somber, the the sadness, the plight of these the you know the Cratchit family's lives, and and you don't even get all the merriment of like Fezziwig. That scene lasted way too short. That you know, I mean, in in some of the other adaptations, that one really shows you know 
that was Scrooge when he knew how to have fun, when he knew how to, you know, and, and he remembers that, and that's important for the story, and here it's just kind of glossed over. Um, the, the spirits are good. Um, the, um, they, I, I don't think they've done the, the light of the, the Ghost of Christmas, uh, past as much or as thoroughly before as they do in this one. That's, that's a pretty good, um, there's, there, there's this one moment where he, like, really gets up next to Ebenezer, and it's actually so bright that it lights up parts, parts of the, uh, the theater that you're in, so that's, that's actually kind of cool. Um, and that really drives home the point, too. Ghost of Christmas Present is every bit as jolly and almost a little too much at times, but maybe that's just old cynical me. Um... Ghost of Christmas yet to come, pretty cool, um, well done, and not too much, I didn't think. Um, but yeah, the, the drama tends to work somewhat, um, but they do, you know, you can tell that stuff was, I could tell definitely, that some stuff was cut, um, and for not much of a reason. It's, it's well paced. You're never you're never bored during it. Um, the you know the ninety minutes or so pass nice and fast. There's no real um, there's no point where it spends too long on anything. Um, it rather it goes t too fast past some stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I think that was about it. All in all, it's not really, it's not one of the best of the adaptations. I am, um, my personal favorite of them remains Alistair Sims' version. I think it's like 90, 1951 or something. If you can find a copy of that and you haven't already seen it, even if you have already seen it, watch that one. That one, by far the best Scrooge. Yeah, I am. Um, not one. I I wouldn't say it's one you have to see uh, the two thousand nine version. And I I definitely wouldn't go if you're just a fan fan of Jim Carrey. That's there's no real. Um, he barely does anything. That's Jim Carrey. Um, it's his voice. That's about it. Um. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, if um, if you do go watch it, it is pretty good. It does get a lot of it um, fairly right, and that sure do, does look like Victorian um, era England, London. Um, so yeah, if you do watch it, enjoy. Um, if you have any opinions, feel free to post or email me. See you next time.